So day change, but fight for sure happening. Fight for sure happening, 100%. Um, I don't know if it's going to be in Houston or not. But the boxing world has been buzzing about the upcoming fight between Gervonta Tank Davis and Lamont Roach Jr. set for December 14th. While Davis has built a reputation as one of the most exciting and powerful fighters in the sport, this matchup has sparked significant debate. Critics have been quick to point out that Roach, a super featherweight, isn't the kind of opponent that fans were hoping to see Tank fight next. The consensus is that Tank, despite his immense talent, is once again avoiding top-tier opponents in favor of a less challenging fight. Calvin Ford, Tank's trainer, has tried to explain the reasoning behind the fight. He points out that Tank and Roach share a long history dating back to their amateur days, suggesting that the fight holds personal significance. Ford even claims that it's a good fight for the community, which is a sentiment that's hard for fans to digest when they're paying $75.95 for a pay-per-view event. Fans are more concerned with the matchup's legitimacy and whether it will serve as an appropriate test for Tank, especially after a string of what many perceive as easier challenges. Lamont Roach, while a skilled fighter, isn't a household name. His record stands at 25 wins, 1 loss, and 1 draw, with only 10 knockouts, which doesn't inspire much fear in the lightweight division. His most notable loss came in 2019 to Jamal Herring, and since then, his victories have come against lesser-known fighters. While Roach is known for his solid defensive skills and counterpinching, many see him as too small and underwhelming compared to the elite lightweights like Shocker Stevenson, Devin Haney, and Teofimo Lopez, who all represent tougher competition. Ford's defense that they're simply focused on the fight at hand and that Roach's inclusion is about their history isn't resonating with the fans. They see it as another example of Tank avoiding the best possible challenges. Critics argue that Tank, who has built a reputation as a knockout artist with 30 wins and 28 knockouts, should be facing fighters like William Zepeda, Isaac Cruz, or even Ryan Garcia instead of moving up to face someone like Roach, who has a less impressive resume. Tank's past history with smaller opponents, such as Leo Santa Cruz and Hector Luis Garcia, further fuels the fire. While both of these opponents were skilled, they were naturally smaller than Tank, which many feel gave him a clear advantage. Ford's defense of Tank choosing an opponent with a personal history and a community angle isn't enough to satisfy the majority of fans. They want Tank to face top-tier challengers, and this fight with Roach doesn't seem to fit the bill. Even former champion Teofimo Lopez didn't hold back his thoughts on Tank's decision to fight Roach. Lopez has faced high-level competition throughout his career, including Vessel Lomachenko, and believes that Tank is taking the easy route by facing a smaller, less experienced opponent. Lopez's criticism highlights what many fans feel, Tank isn't proving himself against the best. Instead, he's fighting opponents like Roach, who aren't at the level of the lightweights fans want to see him face. Devin Haney, another top lightweight, joined the criticism of Tank's decision to fight Roach. Haney mocked the matchup on social media, and Tank fired back, using Haney's own fight against Ryan Garcia to make a point. This ongoing rivalry between Tank and Haney, which has seen both fighters exchange barbs over the years, brings to light the real fight fans want to see. Tank vs. Haney. Haney, the undisputed lightweight champion, represents the kind of challenge that could define Tank's career, yet instead of stepping into the ring with Haney, Tank is choosing a smaller opponent. Tank has been vocal about the criticism, insisting that he doesn't care what people say or think. In his view, he's simply doing what he enjoys fighting. His dismissive attitude toward the criticism, while reflective of his confidence, doesn't sit well with those who believe that, as one of boxing's brightest stars, Tank should be pushing himself to take on the biggest challenges to solidify his legacy. Lamont Roach, on the other hand, has a lot to gain from this fight. If he were to pull off an upset, it would be one of the biggest surprises in boxing, and it would elevate him from a relatively unknown fighter to a major player in the lightweight division. However, the odds are stacked against him. Moving up to lightweight to challenge a fighter as powerful as Tank is no small task, and Roach will need to box smart, use his jab to keep Tank at a distance, 
and avoid getting caught in one of Tank's devastating counterpunches. Roach's lack of knockout power only 10 knockouts in 27 fights could be a major disadvantage against Tank, who has a reputation for ending fights quickly with his explosive power. Shocker Stevenson, another highly regarded lightweight champion, has even weighed in on the fight, stating that while Roach is a good fighter, fans shouldn't underestimate him. However, most expect Tank to win this one, and the question remains, Will Tank's decision to fight Roach hurt his reputation and legacy? Is he avoiding the tougher, more lucrative matchups that could establish him as one of the best of his generation? Eddie Hearn, a major promoter in boxing, has suggested that the financial aspects of the fight also play a significant role in the decision to fight Roach. Hearn has pointed out that the financial offer for this fight doesn't align with the massive payouts Tank has become accustomed to. With Tank's past fights generating impressive pay-per-view numbers, a fight against Roach is unlikely to have the same financial draw. Hearn speculates that Tank's refusal to accept a smaller payday for this fight could be linked to a past offer from Matchroom to face Conor Ben, which Tank ultimately turned down. This suggests that Tank is seeking a higher price for what he views as a less challenging fight. Kenny Ellis, a member of Tank's coaching team, has defended Tank's choice of Roach, emphasizing Roach's amateur pedigree and toughness. Ellis believes that just because Roach isn't as well-known doesn't mean he's not a capable fighter. Roach's seven national championships and solid background in the amateurs give him a level of skill that can't be ignored. Ellis has dismissed the criticism that Tank is cherry-picking opponents, stating that the so-called big names in the division have turned down offers to fight him. However, this argument doesn't sit well with many fans, who feel that Tank has consistently avoided the top names in the division. The fact that he has fought smaller opponents for his recent defenses only reinforces this perception. It seems like Tank's team is working hard to protect him from potential losses rather than taking the risk of challenging the best in the division. Oscar De La Hoya, a legendary figure in boxing, has a different perspective on Tank. He views Tank as a fearless fighter who embraces risk, and he believes that this is what has made Tank a superstar in the sport. De La Hoya admires Tank's willingness to fight and take chances, even if that means facing an opponent who could potentially knock him out. For De La Hoya, Tank's willingness to take risks is what sets him apart and makes him a fan favorite. Pali Malignaggi, a respected boxing analyst, has also weighed in on the fight, calling it an opportunity for Roach to raise his profile, but questioning the merit of the fight in the context of Tank's career. Malignaggi doesn't see Roach as a deserving opponent for a pay-per-view event, and argues that the matchup fails to deliver on the excitement fans are looking for. He and other analysts like Chris Algieri have expressed frustration over the fact that there are so many talented fighters in the lightweight division who could make for far more exciting matchups. Tim Bradley, another boxing analyst, has been particularly vocal about what he sees as a pattern of tank fighting lesser opponents. He believes that Tank has yet to prove himself against the best and has been kept in what he describes as protective custody by his promoters. Bradley points out that Tank's fight against Frank Martin earlier this year was against a fighter who hadn't yet proven himself at the highest level, and he feels that Tank's team is not doing enough to challenge him. Despite the criticism, Tank remains one of the sport's biggest stars and his knockout power and undefeated record continue to excite fans. However, the question remains whether his decision to fight fighters like Roach will tarnish his legacy. Fans and analysts alike are calling for Tank to step up and face the best in the lightweight division, but whether that happens soon is still uncertain. For now, Tank's fight against Roach will likely be a spectacle but the calls for him to fight top contenders like Haney, Stevenson, or Lopez are growing louder. The next few years of Tank's career will be critical in defining his place in boxing history, and if he continues to take on less challenging opponents, it could end up being a missed opportunity to cement his legacy as one of the sport's greats.